Throughout the 75 plus years that the NFL has been broadcasted to the public, we've seen black and white turn to color, high definition, and now 4 and 5K video. I'm sure we're not too far from VR broadcasts as well, but there's one aspect that will always be more important than any visual advancement. I'm talking about the announcers. Today, we're determining which announcers are the GOATs and which need to go. I won't be covering every duo in the game, just the ones that really stick in my mind. Before we do, Anything though, I need to give a dishonorable mention to the old Monday Night Football crew. They honestly ruined Monday Night Football for me. What a catch! Unbelievable! Cliff Kingsbury said, I was surprised at how good of a receiver he is and how good of a route runner he is. This young man's cashing in. First and goal from the five. You do not need three people with mics in the booth. It just creates an environment of people going one after the other, trying to leapfrog each other with a better statement. And it winds up bleeding into the next play. So let's start off with the big one. Mike Tirico, Chris Collinsworth. I know a lot of people don't like Chris Collinsworth and he gets memed a lot, but you can tell that he cares about his job and he's always prepared. So I've never had a big issue with him. Tariko is solid all around as well. I kind of liked him more with John Gruden before, but he knows how to dial up the excitement. Jackson throws complete. It's Andrews for the touchdown. But Burrow pressure up the middle. He's sacked. Josh Bynes snaps it. Jordan Stout holds it. Justin Tucker wins it for Baltimore. So they're in the good tier. Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, another crew that gets a lot of hate. Aikman is solid, but Buck can be a little annoying, as everyone knows. Mitchell. 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 He also adds unnecessary commentary as well. You don't need to say, still not in, and now in. Again though, these are minor gripes. They could be a lot worse. They're always professional. They're always prepared. So I appreciate that. Do you play in the NFL? What's longer, a half or five eighths? Or uh, five eighths is a little longer there, Joe. <laughs> they are on the B list. Good or fine or however that works. Al Michaels, Kirk Herbstreet. 10 years ago, Al and Chris were the best on TV. Faith Hill even said so. And that's when Al Michaels was really at the top of his game. Whenever he's giving play-by-play, -play, it kind of seems delayed, like he has to process and verify what's happened on field before he can come out and state it. Mayfield from his own end zone caught, deep down the sideline, and it is caught by Skoranek. But again, that's just gonna come with age, so who knows how much more time he has doing this. I'll enjoy it while he's still in the game. So on Herb Street, a lot of people were giving him hate last year because he was out of his element, he's not in the NCAA world. That's where his voice feels a lot more natural, but still, I thought it was fine. Just fine all around. I think that they're a solid duo, and in year two, I think they'll be able to jump it up. But again, they're working with Thursday Night Football, so it's not the best product in the world. They're in the good tier. Greg Gumbel. Another guy who was a legend at one point, and I believe he's actually out of the NFL now. My main issue with him, this call this year, which might be the worst in history. We're set, still with the ball. Now throws inside the five to the end zone. It's just very low energy and bad. So, C-list. Okay, so Mark Sanchez and Kevin Kugler, or Kugler, however you say it. My main issue here, Mark Sanchez. I like Mark Sanchez's voice, but he does not know when to shut up. Sliding on the field, sliding in the playoffs, sliding in DMs, man, it's awesome. I'm also not a big fan of like this shock commentary thing that's been going on with guys like him and RG3. It's cleared out defenders faster than a teenager clears his search history on his web browser, holy smokes. It's just like a way to grab a quick headline. Mark also interrupts the play-by-play -play a lot. On Stafford, wants the fade. Oh, Things to go stack to the top. Stafford Got looking him. for Coop. And it's Cup out of the backfield to the five hole. Mariona Got on him. the slant. But he to the left, throws it right. And, it, oh. and Riley Dixon's oh. punt is blocked. It's just not great. Again, Kugler's pretty solid, but Sanchez, you got to improve, man. Still, though, things could be worse. C is necessary. That's enough positivity for now though. Let's get into the real dirt. I hate to do this to Daryl Johnson because I think he's awesome, but Joe Davis. 
man, is this guy bad. Not everyone might feel this way, so let me know if you feel otherwise. Zero breathing room. He tries to sneak it. The ball is loose. Impossible. Do the Vikings have it? His cadence really throws me off, and his tone is so flat when he gets excited, too. He wants Jefferson, climbs the ladder, oh my goodness! He literally sounds like Ed from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Daryl Johnson saves this broadcast because of his genuine tone and his knowledge of the game. But Joe Davis in big moments cannot be trusted. A big play on the first one! Home run! Play one! Two of the house! What a start for the Dolphins! In general, it just doesn't sound natural. I'm not a fan. Joe Davis, you are bad. But let's finish on a positive note. These are the best of the best in the game. Their voices are synonymous with Sundays. And just note, if Scott Hansen was a true play-by-play -play and wasn't Red Zone, we all know he's the top dog in here. But I'm not including him. Kenny Albert, Jonathan Vilma. Kenny Albert was born to announce. Three play action. Cousins going deep for Jefferson in the end zone. Touchdown! And Kenny and Jonathan's dynamic is really solid. They gel well off of each other. Sometimes Vilma will jump in. You saw Watt on the sidelines. Wentz, there's Fogum. Touchdown, Travis Fogum! But overall, it seems harmless and it's not too often. So it's not that big of a deal. So these guys get an A. Kevin Burkhart and Greg Olson. So they just did the Super Bowl. They're obviously rising stars within the Fox announcing crew. And I think they're pretty great all around. First half. You're sitting on some. You sat on the, you sat the, on the call button. I'm so excited. Hard I'm so to excited sit on the call button. But there you go. You know, it's just this first half, it seemed like Tennessee couldn't do anything right. Olson does his homework. He adds depth and insight into the color commentary. And Burkhart is simply a professional. He doesn't have that much of an iconic voice, but he delivers when it counts. Loaded up, taking a shot, looking for A.J. Brown, he's got it, touchdown! They get an A, but now we're talking the best of the best. Kevin Harlan and Trent Green. This crew is my personal favorite. I think Kevin Harlan has the best play-by-play -play announcer voice. It's coming oh, he's gonna take it in! He lunged, touchdown, touchdown coming! He has the perfect combination of excitement and pacing when he speaks. Third and 13, and to the end zone, Gasicki, touchdown! What a catch! Woo, 14 yard snare! Him and Trent Green gel off of each other well, and you can tell that they're never trying to be the star of the show or the broadcast. They let the players be the stars. They're exactly what you want when you're watching a game. Exciting educated, and not overbearing. And not to mention, Kevin Harlan has some of the most iconic NBA calls too. Posey will defend. Oh! LeBron James with no regard for human life! So now, our final duo, who you probably could have guessed. Jim Nance, Tony Romo. Jim Nance could be paired with almost anybody and still be the best. It's Hill in the open. Cuts it up. He is the perfect announcer. He can do golf, he can do basketball, he can do football. And he balances humor, drama, and excitement more than any announcer I've ever listened to. His reactions are genuine and his statements are well thought out. Down in the middle, down in the middle. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be a 48 yard attempt. Only 48 yards, that's what it'll be. And if there's any one play-by-play -play announcer that feels like they actually understand the game, it's Jim Nance for sure. When Romo first got into the booth, he was exceptional. And he really was a pioneer in his ability to call plays out before they actually happened. That's up for the fade inside to 16. There's the pass to the end zone, and it is 16. It's Coleman for the touchdown. Clearly, a lot of quarterbacks would be able to do this, but the way in which he did it was educational and entertaining, and also didn't pull you out of what was happening live. In the past year, though, there's been times that Romo almost seemed drunk in the broadcast booth. One of the great throws you'll see all year! This, the alien, Josh Alien Allen! I don't think he's actually sipping on a flask during commercial breaks, but there's just something about the way he ums and errs and ums. Is there contact with the ground? 
I'm not really sure. In general, it just seemed like last season he was a little unprepared. And CBS noticed this as well. Apparently they had to have an actual intervention for him. Basically the message was, you need to prepare because we're paying you a lot of money to do this. Nance went to bat for his boy. He said that he was a great guy and he's a hard worker. So he fought back on the criticism. So just more brownie points for Jim Nance. That guy is the man. So there we go. They are in the upper echelon, those two groups, and that's basically it. So guys, I understand that this was a bit different of a video. It's not quite the video essay stuff that we've been doing, but this is just something that I wanted to try out and see what you people think. So put your tier list down in the chat. Give me your best to worst. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you deeply from the bottom of my heart, and we will see you in the next one.